Released on July 21st of the year 2006, Cold Snap was the 39th Magic the Gathering expansion for the franchise. A callback to the old days of Magic, Cold Snap became part of the Ice Age block as the set replaced the previous expansion Homelands as the second small expansion of that block. The first two sets of that block, Ice Age and Alliances, were released 10 years prior to Cold Snap when Magic the Gathering had only been around for 3 years. Cold Snap had a total of 155 cards, which consisted of 60 commons, 55 uncommons, and 40 rares, along with having the shortest design schedule of any Magic expansion, 6 weeks. The set was released in 15 card booster packs through 4 pre-constructed decks called Oryx Stampede, Beyond the Grave, Gelder and Cunning, and Snowscape, along with being released in fat packs, which included additional items such as random Pro Tour player cards, the novel The Gathering Dark, and a new original story by Jeff Grubb that was in the player's guide as well. The designers and developers wanted to hit a retro feel for the set since there was a decade-long gap between Alliances and Cold Tap. Thus, items such as Cumulative Upkeep, Pitch Cards, Lands That Do Not Tap for Mana, and the Snow-Covered Lands were just some of the things included in this expansion. Cold Snap also had two new mechanics being introduced within the set, Recover and Ripple. Recover allows a player to return cards with the keyword ability to their hand by paying the card's recover cost when a creature goes into their graveyard from play. However, if they do not pay the recover cost, then the card is instead removed from the game. An example of this can be seen on the black instant card Grim Harvest. The other mechanic, Ripple, lets a player reveal four cards from the top of his or her library and play all the revealed cards with the same name as the card with the triggered ability without paying their mana cost. An example of this mechanic was the red instant spell Surging Flame. The story of this set takes place on the Plain of Dominaria during the period known as the Thaw. The Rhymewind Wizards, the sorcerers who worship eternal ice and led by the Chiromancer Hydar, wish to bring back the Ice Age after Freilis had cast the World Spell. This story goes over the rise of Hydar's power, seeking out Phyrexian magic to aid him in his cause before his eventual downfall. If you would like to know more about this and Dominaria in general, check out my previous video called History of Dominaria that goes over the history of the plane itself. Cold Snap had a total of 10 cycles and one vertical cycle throughout the set. The vertical cycle was the Rhymewind Wizards, as previously mentioned, which were blue wizards that can activate their abilities if you controlled four or more snow-covered lands in play. The Rhymewind Wizards were Rhymewind Task Mage at the common level, Rhymewind Chiromancer at the uncommon level, and Hydar, Rhymewind Master at the rare level. Regular cycles included ally color cumulative upkeep cards, both snow basic lands and snow tap lands, surging spells, which were cards that helped the ripple mechanic, kindle spells, which were cards that became stronger the more copies you had in the graveyard, and the martyr cycle of human creatures. The last four cycles include the enemy hosers, which were a cycle of cards that hampered the card's enemy colors in a certain way. This particular cycle included the white card Luminesce, the blue card Flash Freeze, the black card Deathmark, the red card Chiroclasm, and the green card Carplusion Strider. There was the Super Pitch Card Cycle, which was a callback to the original pitch cards such as Force of Will in the early days of Magic, with cards that could be played by removing two cards of a certain color out of your hand instead of playing the high mana cost. This cycle of cards included the white card Sunscour, the blue card Commandeer, the black card Soul Spike, the red card Fury of the Horde, and the green card Allosaurus Rider. There were the uncommon gold spells, which were cards that required two allied colors to cast for a certain effect, and included the blue white Vanish into Memory, the black blue Blizzard Spectre, the black red Deep Fire Elemental, the green red Wilderness Elemental, and the white green Juniper Order Ranger. The last cycle were the tricolor creatures, which required at least three different colors for the card to be cast onto the battlefield. This cycle included Diamond Fairy, Tamanoa, Sakua Deathkeeper, Garza's Old Play Queen, with the last card being the notorious Zur the Enchanter, who has become quite popular within the commander format. Along with the cycles, Cold Sap had one mirror pair, two true reprints, and two functional reprints present within the set. The mirror pair consisted of White Shield Crusader and Stromgall Crusader, which had two mana activated abilities and protection from the opposite color. The true reprints were obviously the cycle of Snow Covered Lands previously mentioned earlier within this episode, along with the other true reprint being Frozen Solid, which at this point in time was last printed in the expansion Scourge and stopped basically any creature within its tracks. One functional reprint was Krovakin Scoundrel, which played the same as several portal block cards including Skeletal Snake from the original portal set, Dakmore Scorpion from Portal Second Age, and Wei Infantry from Portal Three Kingdoms. The other functional reprint was Ronum Unicorn, which played the same as Kami of Ancient Law from the expansion Champions of Kamigawa. There were multiple notable cards within the set that included not just powerful frequently used spells, but also cards that were either a first or a rare presence. To start, there were the cards Panglacial Worm and Hakon Stronggold Scourge, with Panglacial Worm being able to be played through deck searching and Stronggold Scourge not being able to be cast from your hand, which were first for Magic the Gathering gameplay at the time. 
There was also the card Vanish into Memory, one of the gold spells previously mentioned that was designed through the You Make the Card promotion through Wizards of the Coast that was made available through the MTG website. Prior cards made through this promotion at the time include the card Forgotten Ancients, with the other card being Crucible of Worlds. There was Boreal Druid, which was a green card that helped with elf strategies early on and has seen a resurgence in 2016 in Commander tournaments. Scred, which is a red card that dealt more damage with the more snow lands you had in control, was actually part of many mana ramp strategies at the time. It also sees a good amount of play in the popper format as well, since it was printed as a common card. Mouth of Ronum was a land card that could tap for 1 mana or have an activated ability that dealt 4 damage to a target creature. Just like Scred, this was also part of many mana ramp strategies at the time. The other notable land card was Dark Depths, which entered the battlefield with 10 ice counters and could have a counter removed if 3 mana were paid. Once all the ice counters were removed, you could put the Merit Lage creature token onto the battlefield. However, Dark Depths wouldn't see much play until much later. Two cards that would change this was Vampire Hexmage from the original Zendikar set and Thespian Stage from the set Gatecrash, which found ways around the counters. There was a card Mistress Bobble, which was an artifact that, when sacrificed, would let you look at target player's library and draw a card the next turn. This didn't see any play until the mid-2010s when it started to become more popular in the deck style known as Death's Shadow. After that, there were two cards from the Kindle spell cycle. The first of these two were the card Room Snag, which was a blue card that countered a spell unless the opposing player played a certain amount of mana. However, the card got more expensive to negate when more copies of this card were in the graveyard. Rite of Flame was the other notable Kindle spell that would let you add two mana plus one more random mana for each copy that was in the graveyard. This card was mainly seen in Belcher, Teps, and Dragonstorm strategies, along with seeing a tiny resurgence in 2015 when it was used in Grapestorm deck styles. Next were two enemy hoser spells that were decently effective overall. The first of these two cards were Deathmark, which was a black card that destroyed a target green or white creature. This was mainly seen in the deck styles of Fairy and Jun strategies, but overall it was considered a must-needed sideboard card at the time. The other enemy hoser spell was Flash Freeze, which was a cheap blue spell that countered a target red or green spell. Early on, it was seen heavily in Fairy, blue-black, and blue-white strategies, but in recent years, it has also been used in deck styles such as blue-red aggro and many Delver decks as well. But just like Deathmark, it was mainly a sideboard card for most decks that it was included in. The last notable card on this list is Counterbalance. This is a blue enchantment card that in lots of strategies, repeatedly counter your opponent's spells since you have to reveal the top of your card as a requirement. It was used widely with the cards Brainstorm and Sensei's Divining Top, with the combination of the latter card getting the nickname Countertop for legacy format strategies. Counterbalance was also used in threat strategies early on, with the most recent deck style playing this card being Miracles. As of the recording of this episode, the price of a booster box of Cold Sap is going for around $500. And that is all for this episode of Card Anthology. I hope you enjoyed this episode as we take a look back at the Cold Snap set. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and share the video, along with subscribing to the channel for more Magic the Gathering videos. Be sure to also check out the Card Anthology playlist, which starts from the very beginning of Magic's first set, the Thrain unofficial audiobook done by yours truly, along with one of the larger videos called A History of Dominaria, which mentions some of the events of Cold Snap. If you would like to support the channel even more, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the video description below to check out the different tiers and rewards that are being offered. Thank you again everyone for the support. This is Coach signing out and I will see you all in the next episode.